Hello everyone and welcome to the session in which we are going to treat hyperparameter tuning with weights and biases. There are three methods available for us to implement hyperparameter tuning in weights and biases. That is the random search, the grid search and the Bayesian search method. At the end of the session, you'll be able to search for the most suitable parameter values which optimize the accuracy. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this. Previously, we saw how to implement hyperparameter tuning with TensorBoard. We created this model tune method which takes this argument h params, that's hyperparameters, which are actually going to be tuned, as you could see here. And then we have in our, as output of this model tune method the accuracy. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to tune or we're trying to obtain the optimal values for these different hyperparameters which maximize the accuracy of the model. The exact method we used was a grid search. With a grid search method, we actually go through each and every option or each and every possibility. And for each possibility, we are going to log its accuracy as we did right here. Now with weights and biases, we're going to see how to redo this BERT in an easier and more reliable manner. So let's check out on the documentation right here. You see we have this documentation. Here we have hyperparameter tuning. We could click on the sweeps quick start, which shows globally what hyperparameter uh, tuning with weights and biases entails. We set up weights and biases. We configure the sweep. We initialize a sweep, we launch agents, we visualize the results, and then finally stop the agent. From here, we'll see how to run the sweeps in Jupyter. So the weights and biases sweeps allow you to easily try out a large number of hyperparameters while tracking model performance and logging all the information you need to reproduce experiments. Now we're gonna focus on this uh, pew Python method where the sweep configurations are in the form of a dictionary like this. The way the sweeps work or the way weights and biases sweep work is we have a central sweep server that is this one here, the central sweep server and then we have this different agents right here. We could have many more agents. Then once we set the configurations, the sweep configurations in this central sweep server right here, the agents now take over and do the actual hyperparameter tuning. That is a search for the best hyperparameters which help in optimizing the model. And this parallel method of implementing sweeps in weights and biases help make the hyperparameter tuning process even more efficient. As you could see here, this could be done in just two steps. You initialize the sweep, and put all necessary information or give all necessary information for this central or to this central sweep server and then we run this different agents right here. Now that said we have the sweep configuration which looks similar to what we had with when we're working with TensorBoard. So here we had this configuration right here where we specify for each hyperparameter the values we you can take given that we're having a grid search we're making use of grid search algorithm or we're specifying simply all those different values and that was it and now coming back to weights and biases you see here you just need to specify for example the hyperparameter that's number of epochs you give the values learning rate for example you give the minimum and maximum value and so on and so forth but then note that here, this, as in this example, given the documentation, the method you're using is not a grid search. That is, they're not going through each and every possibility in the list of values. What they're doing here is actually a random search, which happens to be more efficient than the grid search algorithm. Since it's possible in a shorter period of time to get very optimal values of the hyperparameters, as compared to the grid search algorithm where you need to go through each and every value. 
now let's get back here we have the name we have the method and we have the parameters to understand where all this come from check out in this sweep configuration right here so clicking on the sweep configuration we have the structure of a sweep configuration then here we have the different keys and their descriptions you would notice this method which we had seen here let's open this in another tab open a new tab and have that so let's have it this way there we go we have this name method and parameters which we could see here we have name method parameters and then for each of these configuration keys like this method for example there is this more explicit description so here we have the method we're going to use if it's a grid, grid search iterates over all possible combinations of parameter values. The random search chooses a random set of values on each iteration. And weights and biases also comes with this other method, which is the bias method. This Bayesian hyperparameter search method uses a Gaussian process to model relationship between the parameters and the model metric and chooses parameters to optimize the probability of improvement. This strategy requires the metric key to be specified. So right here we see now we have these three different methods and that is why here when we wanted to work with a random it suffices to just put this out here. Either you put it random or you put greed or you put bias. Now we move to the next we have the parameters. Oh uh, yeah we have the parameters. Anyway the name you just you could put uh, the name for the sweep that depends on you. Like here is my sweep. Then the parameters here it gets a little bit more tricky because here you have this year this key and then the values a dictionary which itself is having its own keys and values so we have this parameters let's get back to parameters here we have the parameters where are we we have parameters and then we have this different possible values and the descriptions so getting back here you'll notice that this hyperparameter epochs takes values in this list that is added 10 20 or 50 while the learning rate can be chosen between 0 0.001 0 0.0001 and the maximum 0 0.1 so each hyperparameter has its own distinct way of describing the values it can take now getting back here we have okay we have the uh, different we have these parameters and then for those values you see you can take you can say a values you can say a value so sometimes like here we may decide and say okay we want this epoch to take only just one value there we just have value and then in the case where one several values you see it specifies all valid values for this hyperparameter compatible with grid and all of that now here in some cases you have a distribution and this selects a distribution from the distribution table below so you could see here this specifies how values will be distributed if they're selected randomly eg with a random or biased method so when with the when working with the random or biased methods you may want to select your values based on a given distribution and here are the list of distributions you can use you have constant categorical uh, int uniform uniform distribution cure uniform log uniform cure log uniform normal distribution cure normal log normal and cure log normal then from this distribution we now move to min max min max is what you actually saw here yeah you had this min max so here you're sim simply saying you want your learning rate to fall or to have a minimum value of this and a maximum value of that so you randomly pick values between this uh, in this range and that's it you have mu mu mean parameter for normal or log normal distributed hyperparameters so here you're having uh normally distributed hyperparameters and you're specifying the mean while here you're specifying the standard deviation then for cure you have the quantization step size for quantized hyperparameter our next key is the metric and with a metric we have to define the name of the metric the goal and the target now here you could have for example like here your validation loss you have this metric validation loss you could say you want to optimize your parameters or you want to choose the hyperparameters which minimize the validation loss 
Now you could also change this into an accuracy. Let's say validation accuracy or just the accuracy or just the train accuracy. In that case, you want to choose the hyperparameters which maximize the accuracy. And hence, here at the level of the goal, you either minimize or maximize. The default is mi minimize. So if you have a validation loss, it's needless specifying the goal because by default, it's minimized. And for now, as in this documentation, there's really no automatic way of deciding whether it's minimize or maximize. Anyway, you, you can always do that manually by specifying. Now, the next uh, we have is a target. So here with the target, as you could see here, for example, 0 0.95, it means that if you happen to get a set of hyperparameters which permit you get this uh, validation accuracy to this target value, then at that point, you will stop the process of searching for the optimal hyperparameters. And what happens exactly is all agents with active runs will finish their jobs but no new runs will be launched in the sweep since we've already attained the objective from here we have early terminate which is an optional feature that speeds up hyperparameter search by stopping poorly performing runs we get back here copy out this code let's copy it okay copy it we get back now to our hyperparameter tuning we paste out the code here and then we're just going to try to replicate what we had done already with TensorBoard. So here we paste this out here and then we have this num units one. We have this num units one this year and have that num units one values. There we go. Let's copy this out and paste here. So we replace these values which we had already. And then the next will be num units two. It's kind of similar, so we should um, num units two. Okay, so here we should just copy this and paste right here. Num units two values. Yeah, it's kind of similar. Okay, we have that, and then there we go. So we have num units one, num units two, and then the next dropout rate. Oh, we're gonna have learning rate, so let's just have the dropout rate here. So we have the drop out rate and then this drop out rate we take values um 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 now let what yeah what we're gonna use is like this mean max so let's just copy this out here and then let's copy this out and then paste it out here okay so we have drop our rate but here we're gonna go from 0 0.1 to 0. Point, let's say 0 0.4 and it's random actually not greed so we have that and then here, okay, name, let's say name, malaria prediction sweep. Okay, mental random parameters, that's fine. So we get in each and every parameter now. Uh, we have the drop out rate set. We now move to regularization rate, regularization rate, um, values between 0 0.001 and 0 0.1 okay so we have 0 0.01 0 0.1 and then yeah what we could do now is we make use of let's say distribution and then we have your uniform so we specify that we want to make use of a uniform distribution and then here so we're gonna uh use the same again here for the learning rate distribution um uniform there we go we have that uniform and that's fine and here we're gonna go from this let's say one e negative four mean and then max one e negative two one e negative two okay so looks good let's take this off now let's take off all what we've said here and then we have that so from this we'll be able to create now this sweep id we'll get our sweep id by running this one db sweep and passing in the sweep configuration which to run an agent, the first step is we're going to define a function to run the training based on those hyperparameters, and then we're going to pass that function with the sweep ID here in this 1db agent method. So now let's copy this code out and then paste it out here. Paste this out here. And then you'll also notice that this is kind of like similar to what we had done here because here we had defined this method which takes in the hyperparameters which we're trying to tune 
and then we go through this method here for each and every sweep now let's get back here we have the model we could simply make use of this model so let's copy out some part let's just let's just copy out this here let's copy that out and uh, paste this here paste it out and we have model tune um lunet model which we create here hyperparameters and all of that and then instead of what we had here where we passed the we had a compile and the feed method what will return here will be just this model so we we'll return the lunet model right here so let's have this lunet model let's take out this part of the code and that's fine okay so we have this model tune here um instead of make model we have model tune and we'll pass the configuration in here we have configuration anyway let's say config since we've defined this already here so we have this config called 1db config here are the different configs we had done already and then uh we get the model from this model tune now we also pass this config into model tune we want to have here this config so we will have config and and filters and we'll do the same for all the rest that's done now let's run the cell we have our model tune and then right here we have this model tune we get our model for epoch in range config number of epochs and epochs that's fine and then loss equal model dot fit your model training code here now we are going to paste this code here let's paste this out here that looks fine we're going to command this and we could add the 1db callback in here so we have this now for epoch in range of epochs we have that count equal five one we now use this 1db agent method pass in the sweep id the function that's train and uh, the count so we're ready to go let's run this we get this errors we have your key error number of filters and so on and so forth so let's get back and when we look at this here we see that this number of filters pool size uh, number of strides all of that haven't uh, or weren't actually part of these parameters so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna add up all this and then ensure that we have all these parameters or rather all this um, hyperparameters here which we used in building the model included in this parameters for our sweep configuration so even if you have a parameter like number of filters which we do not really want to tune we could just give it a specific value now that's said let's have it here um paste it out here and that's it so we have this im size kernel size number of strides pull size um then two and so on and so forth so that's fine let's rerun this again so we run this cell again and that should be okay so that that's okay we've created a sweep with this id and then now we get back to our training all right yeah we get back to our train method and this train method notice that a run has been created and this run is only within the scope of this with year with this with keyword so all the different processes which are run inside here will be under this run now recall that when creating a run like we had before when creating this run here we could include a project and the entity so let's go ahead and have that that's also one point we didn't add here when creating that previously so let's go ahead and add it here let's take this off put that down okay so we have our project we have the entity and that's fine now that's okay we could okay we've run this already so we could simply delete this one now we have this sweep config that's fine we're gonna change this here we're gonna have config learning rate config and learning rate okay then we're gonna take this off so we take this off looks fine and then we're gonna run this on the validation data validated set 
Another point we've forgotten is to include the metrics. Recall that here we need to have the metrics. So after the parameters, after defining the parameters, we now move to the metrics. So we have that, and now we have this metrics. Okay, so here we have metrics, and the metric we're going to use is going to be the accuracy. So we have name, goal, and target. All right, here we have the name, the name of the metric, accuracy, accuracy, um, the goal, the goal is to maximize, we wouldn't, we would not set any target for now. So we have this, we'll take off this S here, it's actually metric as in the documentation. Before starting up with a training, we're going to include the 1db callback right here. So we have this callbacks and then we have 1db callback. Okay, so we've included that. That's fine. We now run this. Let's increase this counts to 5. Now you could take this to as many counts as you wish. But in the session, we're going to work with a count of 5. Then we also really don't need this for loop right here since we are making use of the feed method. In a case where you have a custom training, then you need this kind of for loop. So let's have this backward and then take this off. Okay, so that's it. We now have this year and we could specify the number of epochs. So let's suppose we put this to two and this count to five. Now we run this. Training started, as you could see here, we have this agent starting this run with this following configuration. The dropout rate, the image size, canal size, and all the configs are being put out here. Notice that for these values which we have fixed, we have them here. And then for these values which we want to tune, we see the learning rate, for example, has been chosen at random. Dropout rate at random. Regularization rate at random. Number of or uh, number of dens one uh, a random or uh, from the set of values given to it and dens two from the set of values given to it and then based on this configurations we get this output then for the next run you can see here we have this other configurations notice how this goes to 128 now 64 a year different values different values different values and then we have different outputs so that's it. Once you're done with a particular um, sweep, you could have you could open this in this sweep page right here. So you have one the BAI neural learn on categorize. Normally this should be under the project, but anyway, let's just click on this, and then what do we get? We have these different runs right here, and then we have the loss accuracy um, epoch versus epoch. You see here, then scrolling down, we have the sweep. So let's take down this chart and then focus on the sweep. We could expand this accuracy. We get this chart with different runs. And up until now, we have this highest accuracy for this points right here, where the run is the dutiful sweep 14. So that's the highest accuracy we get, 77%. And so basically what this plot shows us is the accuracy values we have for the different runs as time goes on. Now let's close this and then open up this other one here. We have this parameter importance with respect to a given metric, like in this case, the accuracy. So we're saying this parameter, which represents the number of outputs in our first dense layer, this is number of outputs in second dense layer, learning rate, dropout rate, regularization rate, runtime, and kernel size. And so here, what this shows us is the most important configuration parameter or the configuration parameter which affects the accuracy the most is this n dense one. And then the correlation is positive. That is increasing n dense one leads to an increase in the accuracy whereas this one the correlation is negative so increasing this leads to a reduction in the accuracy learning rate increasing this leads to a reduction in accuracy this the same and then the runtime 
has a positive coloration with the accuracy another thing you could do is you could come right here and then pick this so you could pick the loss and then you see you have um different values for the importance and the correlation getting back here we could check out on this parallel view right here where you have the drop out learning rate and there's one and then two regularization rate and the accuracy you see that um we have the highest accuracy value at this year so we could click on that click on that we have this beautiful sweep 14 um the drop out rate let's start with this regularization so let's follow this part and then we see we have a regularization here of 0 0.029 and then here the the and then one and then two actually 64 and then one 128 our uh, learning rate is our learning rate is 0 0.005 our uh, drop our rate is 0 0.12 this shows us that having a low drop our rate uh and a low regularization rate will help increase the accuracy and this makes much sense since this two play a role in avoiding overfitting and so reducing your values will logically help in increasing the accuracy and that's it we've seen how to implement hyperparameter tuning with 1db and integrate it with tensorflow 2. thank you for getting right up to this point and see you next time